Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hi guys, welcome back to Saving Salvage. Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we are back on the Audi A3 and we're gonna do a turbo core change. Um, I haven't actually got the part yet. I'm hoping it's gonna turn up today. So I'm gonna save some time and we're gonna start removing the turbo. Hopefully it shouldn't take too long. And by the time I've done that, hopefully the core shall turn up and then we can crack on and get this turbo rebuilt. And hopefully that is the only issue with the car. So as always guys, if you do enjoy these types of videos, please do like and subscribe if you haven't already. And let us crack on. So as you'll remember from the last video, I removed the exhaust manifold, well not the manifold, sorry, I moved the downpipe to gain access to the turbo core and I found that if you can listen, the turbo is fairly loose. Um, it was fair, there's four bolts on the uh, downpipe, fairly easy to get to. That bottom one was a little bit difficult because we obviously we got four wheel drive on this. So the prop shaft and the, uh, the diff was slightly in the way, but managed to get it. Um, so what we're gonna have to do now is we're going to obviously remove the oil feed and, and the return pipes to the turbo. We'll have to remove those. Um, the turbo is part of the manifold on this car. So I'll we'll have to remove all the manifold bolts as well. Um, I'm hoping the access should be fairly decent. Um, I can't actually remember doing one of these for many years, so um, hopefully it'll be all right. And obviously we've got the intercooler pipes and the intake pipes, which I've already removed. So it should just be a case of removing uh, what I've just mentioned. So let's crack on and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. But just before I do that, I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a professional website, online store, or portfolio. It's really easy to claim a domain or URL, and you can create a custom site that brings your idea to life. It's really quick and really easy to use. You can get a website set up stupidly quick using one of the templates provided. It's really easy to get started with your own website, guys. All you gotta do is click on templates, and there's loads of different designs you can choose from and it automatically gives you a full website design and all you've got to do is just chop and change to suit what you want. So it's really easy to change the text and the pictures. The feature that I like is the commerce online shop. You'll be able to add products for sale, add a way to get paid and there's just it does it all for you. All you've got to do is just add your details and what's great as well is you can check what it also would look like on a mobile device seeing as the majority of people these days use a mobile phone so that is key. So click the link in my description and head over to squarespace.com and when you've finished creating your website, head over to the checkout and use my discount code saving salvage for 10% off your first website guys. So a massive thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So I thought I'd start with underneath first. As you can see, we're probably gonna have to remove that drive shaft cover first um, so we can gain access to our oil feed pipes and return pipes. So we'll probably have to see it a little bit better around this side. So from here, look, you can see our oil feed, oil return pipe, and there's another pipe on the top there as well. So we're gonna have to remove all those to gain access or to remove the turbo. And there's also a few bolts at the top for the manifold, which we'll have to undo as well. So I'm gonna first of all remove that uh, drive shaft sit, uh, cover there, uh, which hopefully will give me some more access to be able to remove the remaining pipes. take this drive shaft out because we've got to replace the CV boot anyway so uh, the drive shaft does get in the way quite a bit so we might as well just remove it Right, so drive shaft all removed. As you can see, we've got better access to the bottom side of the turbo. So uh, that first braided hose is the oil feed pipe, which goes to the top of the turbo, which I've got to undo from the top. The next one down with the silver sleeve on it, that is the coolant to the turbo. I have undone that bolt. It is on the front side of the turbo that's been removed. And the next one under that with the bigger braided hose is the oil return pipe, which I've also undone from the bottom of the turbo. 
So that is everything, and I've also undone the uh, electrical connections as well. So that is everything done from the bottom. So now we've got to go over to the top, remove the oil feed pipe and the manifold bolts, uh, bolts, and then hopefully we should be able to just pull the turbo out through the top, I think. So that should hopefully be everything off. Uh, as you can see from the bottom here, there's a bracket. Just that like looks like a bit of a U with a tumor. <laughs> um, it's That's the bracket that holds the turbo, supports the turbo to the block. I've just removed that bolt that goes through there, so then that should release the turbo now. So everything else is disconnected, so I'm gonna go through the top for obvious reasons due to the four-wheel drive, which means it definitely ain't coming out through the bottom. Sorry, so I spent so long trying to get this turbo out, I forgot the f uh, camera was actually recording, and it actually ran out of space on my memory card, so it stopped filming ages ago. Um, did manage to get it out. I can't remember what the camera has picked up, um, so hopefully I'll just show you. So I've had to remove this coolant pipe here as well. That one there, that just runs around the back of the cylinder head rocker cover and just goes along here. Uh, and I, no, actually, sorry, it went into the coolant, top of the coolant bottle. Um, and once that was out of the way, I also removed the ignition coil. Um, coil pack plugs which then obviously gave me a lot more room here and I managed to just move the exhaust out of the way just enough so I could kind of twist the turbo and pull it out that way. So here is the turbo and as we can see the problem is there is the turbine. Let me just get my torch. So here is the turbo as you can see here look you can even see from here that it's not right so if I just put that down there you go, look. I think that's a bit of a problem, don't we? Might even be able to pull it out. No. So this is the new cartridge or core that we will be replacing. So as you can see, look, that will sit in between there like that. So we have to take off the manifold and the intake side of the turbo and replace the core in the middle. So I just want to check that it's definitely the right one, which we can do yeah, just having a look, just marrying up the holes. Yep, all looks good to me. So, let's put that back on here. So the next thing we've got to do now is split the uh, turbo apart. So, obviously quite obvious, we're going to have to undo this clamp here, which will then release the manifold from the core, and then we have a series of bolts around the outside, just holding um, the turbo to the intake side of things. So I'm going to put it on a bit of a time lapse now and just break down the turbo to get the core exposed. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually just mark the orientation of the two sides of the core. Uh, as you can see a bit of marker pen on the intake side and the exhaust side just so I know when I put the core back together to get those bang in lines because you can twist and put it back together and just things might slightly not go in uh, as well so always good just to mark it just before you take it apart so you know exactly how it's going back together. So there we go look the turbine is actually completely sheared off and snapped in half. You'll be able to see it a little bit better in there look. You can see that. Where's my torch? So there you can see a bit better, look, completely sheared off, snapped in half. So that's quite lucky actually, that could have been a bit worse. So what I've just done there is I've just undone this uh, that round clamp and I've just knocked the two apart. I've just removed, unbolted the actuator so it's free uh, from the intake side and I've left the hoses attached because they're like one time use hoses so I've just basically just split it apart. So now I've got four bolts here which I need to undo which will then release the core completely uh, and then that is pretty much it for dissembling it and then hopefully the core will just pop out nice and easy then. So while I've got the turbo completely apart like this, I'm just, I'm just actually going to run through how it exactly works. So let me just turn my torch on. So let me just actually put them together a little bit better. Ah! I'm just going to use the old one for reference for the minute. So that would sit. Right, just imagine that that is bolted 
to that. So what happens is this is obviously your cylinder head would go here, which means your exhaust gases go through these four ports, each coming from each cylinder on the car. So as you can see, they all filter down into one here, and the exhaust gases travel through the turbo housing, and the turbine would sit in here. So as the exhaust gases come in, it kind of swirls. So they'll come in from the outside, and they'll just swirl round, and they'll swirl round, go through, through the turbine, which would normally sit in here, round the turbine, and then out here, which is for the downpipe. So now your, your exhaust gases have spun your turbine. The shaft that the turbine sits on is connected to the compressor, which is on the opposite side over here. And now obviously your turbine, which would normally be here, that is now spinning from the exhaust gases, which then spins the compressor on the intake side, and that is what gives you your added airflow into the combustion chamber, which will then give you a lot more power. Now, this is regulated by a wastegate, which is here. This is your wastegate actuator. And as you can see here, look, it is on a flap, which just opens and closes. So basically what happens is, so when the car is seeing too much boost and basically there's too much air going through the turbine wheel, which in turn is giving the car too much boost, it will open this flap here, which bypasses the exhaust gases from the turbine. So instead of going through the turbine, they'll escape straight through this hatch and down through the downpipe. So that is how the boost control pressure is regulated. It is via this wastegate on the side here. So that, that is a very quick overview, albeit a messy one, on how the turbo works. Basically, you've got exhaust gases coming through the turbine, spinning the turbine, which spins the compressor wheel on the intake side, which gives you your boost. And that is all controlled with an actuator here, which is a wastegate which will, when there's too much boost being seen by the car, it will simply open this flap here and basically vent the exhaust gases straight down the exhaust instead of um, going through the turbine, which then regulates and controls the boost pressure for the car. And as you can see, the problem with our one is, is the turbine snapped off uh, and oil is leaking out. All seals have gone completely leaked. As you can see, there's oil on the compressor wheel look, uh, and there's oil that's gone into the intake and the oil was burning, which is why we had smoke coming out. So now I've got my new uh, turbo core here. I'm now gonna rebuild the turbo. I'll put it back on a time lap. I'll rebuild it back up and then I'll show you uh, once it's all back together. There we go, there is the turbo all fully back together, core all in place, everything's bolted back up and as you can see um, I've used my marks which are on the, actually the other side of the turbo just to align it 100% because it is very easy um, to misalign these two so just that would affect your wastegate here and piping and routing etc so it's imperative that you get these two lined up correctly. So everything's all back in, I've now uh, plugged that coolant hose back in as well. Uh, just to give you, there we go, look, there's the new turbine in there, and if I just give it a little wiggle, solid, and spins beautifully. So that is the turbo built. Now, while I've got it off, I thought I would check the diverter valve, which would sit in here, and it is this thing here. So these are very common to go on the, these types of turbo, because the diaphragm in the diverter valve is known to split and when that happens you lose uh, all your boost pressure and it just doesn't boost properly so I thought while I've got it out I'll double check it just to see if it's okay or not and it's a good job I did because that is very much split there you go look completely split so that is going to be leaking boost all over the show um, so we're gonna have to replace that so I'm gonna order the latest revision uh, diverter valve and get that fitted as well and so obviously I won't be able to put this turbo back in today guys because I'm now going to have to wait for a new diverter valve. I'd rather just fit it while it's off because it's just easier. So I'm going to do that and obviously I don't want anything to get in that uh, hole in the meantime. So that is a turbo all rebuilt, just waiting for a new diverter valve and then it will be sweet as a nut. 
Well guys, that is it for today's video. I hope that was a helpful insight, a bit of a how-to guide on how to rebuild a KO3 turbo, well it's the same as a KO4 as well, essentially, um, and a bit about how it works. Um, so as I just said, gonna wait for the new diverter valve to turn up and that turbo then should be sweet as a nut, uh, and then we can get it back in in the next episode, and hopefully we'll be able to, what I'll also do in the next episode, guys, is I will take the sump off, I'll drain the oil, take the sump off and just check the pickup pipe as well because the, the gauze in the pickup pipe can get blocked and that can starve the turbo because the turbo is a sort of the furthest point away in the engine where the oil will get to so it's kind of like the last place oil will get to so that can be a common problem which starves the turbo of oil which is a reason why they can get hot and snap stuff like that. Um, so. We're gonna do that in the next episode as well, guys. So we'll be doing that, hopefully fit the turbo, and then hopefully we'll be starting it and it won't smoke this time. We'll have some boost. There'll be no leaks or anything like that and the car will run sweet. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.